Grade number one, it states that a regular polygon has a perimeter of 45 inches. Again, regular means all sides congruent and all angles congruent. So if I'm looking to find the perimeter of a regular polygon, the formula is the number of sides times its side length. So in this question here, it says the length of one side is seven and a half inches. Name the polygon by the number of sides. So I'm looking for n. So I substitute the length of the perimeter, 45 equals n times 7.5. To solve for n, we have to divide, cancel, 45 divided by 7.5 is 6. So to name the polygon, the polygon is a hexagon as it has six sides. And number two, we have to find the shaded area of the figure to the nearest tenth, so we're going to round. And it says in brackets, assume that the hexagon is regular. So all sides the same, all angles the same. So to go over the work that I need to show, to find the shaded area, I need to find the area of the shaded circle and subtract the area of the hexagon. So to find the area of a circle, area is equal to pi times radius squared. Is, I have the arrows here noting that the distance from the center to the outside. So this is a radius. So pi times 9.2 squared, which is equivalent to 84.64 pi. And then the area of the hexagon. So I'm going to subtract the area of the hexagon. The formula area is equal to one half the perimeter times the apothem. In the picture, not only is this the radius, but it's also telling me it's the length of one of the sides. So over here, the perimeter is going to be, because it's a hexagon, six sides times 9.2. So my perimeter is 55.2 millimeters. So I'm going to subtract one half the perimeter of 55.2 times the apothem. And the apothem was the segment drawn from the center to the side, which has a length of 8 millimeters. So times the apothem 8, that product is going to be 220.8. So when I subtract on the calculator, I get 45.1044022 to the nearest tenth here. So my area or shaded area is approximately, so there's a symbol for approximate, it's not equivalent because I'm rounding, 45.1 units squared. In number three, it says find the area of the quadrilateral to the nearest tenth. Last class, we skipped the back of the day six notes, which was finding the perimeter and area of a triangle in the coordinate plane. Same idea here, find the area of a quadrilateral within the coordinate plane. If you looked at my homework, you saw how to do these types of problems. They're called a box in area problem. So what we do is we box in the given triangle, quadrilateral, whatever the polygon is, and then I know how to find the area of any rectangle or square, so it's going to be length times width, and then I subtract the area of these two triangles. So this triangle here, and then this triangle here. 
to find length of a horizontal and vertical segment, that was the absolute value of the x-coordinates or the y-coordinates, depending on whether it was a horizontal or vertical segment. So I'm just going to make note of where it crosses the x-axis and y-axis. So 1, 2, this is negative 3. 1, 2, 3, negative 4 right here. 1, 2, 3 right here. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm also, too, just to help show my work, I'm going to name this polygon, this rectangle, A, B, C, D, and then I'll label these, this one, uh, or these two vertices right here and here, actually, E and F. So I have the vertices of the quadrilateral label, that given quadrilateral, and then the vertices of the rectangle labeled. So I'm going to take a moment and find each length by showing all of the work, or necessary work. So I'm going to pause this, and I'm going to do the math, and then I'll show you what we do with the math uh, once you have all your computations. Okay, using a yellow pen, I'm just going to highlight what I did. To start for AE, I found the length of this segment. Again, subtracting the difference in the x values as it's a horizontal segment and there's no change in the y. So I got this segment to be 3, so we'll use blue. And then next, I use the absolute value of the difference, the formula to find the length of a b all the way across, which I found to be 7. So this whole side was 7. And then if I knew the hole in the part to the right there, you can see I subtracted 7 minus the 3 is 4. Moving down to side with AD. So AD, the whole length, I did the absolute value of the change in Y now as it's a vertical segment. And the length of AD was 7. And then I found the length of AF, which is 2. So therefore, subtracting, whoops, I didn't show the work. 7 minus 2, we get 5. So FD is 5. And then last, you can see the work for BC and the work for CD. So I have the dimensions of my quadrilateral. Each side is 7, so it is a square. So to find the area, I take the area of the square. which is 7 squared. And now I need to find, let's finish that computation. Now I need to find the area of each of the individual triangles. Well, triangle 1 right here, I'll name that, area of triangle 1 is 1 half base times height. So the base and the height are 2 and 3, these two dimensions as the right angles right here. 1 half of 2 times 3, so half of 2 is 1, 1 times 3 is 3. And then triangle 2, again with the right angle here, here's our base and height. Area of triangle 2 is 1 half of 4 by 7, half of 4 is 2, and 2 times 7 is 14. So now the sum of these two triangles is 17, and to find the total area, I take 49 and subtract 17, and we get 32 units squared.